Welcome everyone to my first podcast ever. We do not have a title or an intro or really anything at this at this um, point in time, but we'll get there. I just wanted to start filming or recording this to just to just get a kick started, you know. And I don't plan on editing this like where I'm gonna be stumbling and stuttering and fumbling my words. But I want that. I want that vibe. I, want, I don't want it to be really official. And I hope that you are okay with listening to that. And I want the vibes to truly be a couple of friends talking on FaceTime and nothing more. So to get started, first episode ever, we're going to be talking about like social media, perception and streaming and the overall just umbrella of it. Like Truly my experience, how I feel, how it's changed in the years that I've streamed. And yeah, I have been streaming since October 5th of 2017, I believe. Off the top of my head, I feel like that is the date that is correct. And it has changed a lot in the in the many years, right? It's 2023 now. So it has it has changed so much. And I want to talk a little bit about like, Social media as it was for me in the early days, like before I started even streaming, like social media, okay? Social media, like the first social media I really remember using was like Tumblr. (laughs) But that was like on my computer, right? Like I would be scrolling Tumblr and a lot of that was just, I loved looking at art and poetry and all of these things and the funny reblogs. And then Instagram came around. And Instagram I used in high school and I want to say around like my maybe sophomore year in high school was when it started really buzzing. But even then, like Instagram was nowhere near what it was now, right? Or what it is now. And I remember Instagram back then was truly like pictures of sunsets and getting your nails done and taking a picture with like an ice cream cone from Dairy Queen or McDonald's like those are the photos or like I very distinctly remember you would get a pedicure and take a photo in your sandals in the summer things like that or you have a tank top with the infinity sign on it and it's just a tank top and your hair and like your face isn't in it like selfies were definitely a thing but they were not what they were now so I just want to, yeah, briefly kind of talk about like my relationship with social media as especially like somebody who grew up on the Internet sometimes when I shouldn't have been doing things on the Internet. But you know how that goes. That's a conversation for another time. So I want to say like I didn't get on Twitter until later on in high school. And holy shit, I mean, that just was subtweet after subtweet. That truly, like, if you guys were on Twitter in any time during your, like, middle high school era, everything is a subtweet. Like, Twitter was nothing like how it is now for me. It was just drama and subtweets. So I actually didn't use Twitter that much. I used Instagram a lot. And, I mean, social media just, like, I think was not as toxic as it is now. There was absolutely toxicity back then. Okay, don't get me wrong. Like there, it was around. I mean, the subtweets were obviously already not very good for anyone's mental. Like, oh my God, I fucking hate make that girl in third period. And everyone's like, well, shit, I'm in the same class. Like, are you, are you talking about me? And then don't even get me started about Ask, Ask FM. Do you, you all remember Ask FM? What in the monstrosity was Ask FM? Asking for trouble. That's what it is. Um... So, yes, I feel like there were tox- there was toxic places on the internet, but I would say they would not last long. Ask FM was truly a little blip in a moment of time. Twitter, yes, but I think that Twitter well, okay, I'm going to be really honest. I I deactivated my high school Twitter account because like it it was a worthless little thing. Like I didn't even want to use it. Um, after I started my quarter J Twitter account, which was full of my community members and friends. So yeah, okay, let's transition, right? Okay, so that was my social media back in the day. My social media use back in the day, which I would say was not very heavy. I would like go outside, touch grass, wow, okay? Then I start streaming. October 2017 hits, I start streaming, 
And I look at all these other streamers around me and they are using social media. It's now like a, I, I've never seen it as like, I guess a job until really like the influencers were coming about, right? But outside of, I guess, I do not consider streamers influencers, but they are in their own sense. So here comes streamers and I'm looking at other streamers and they're all, they have a heavy social media presence. They're tweeting and they're on Instagram and they're on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. I understand that like as a streamer, as I'm on this platform, like I'm kind of supposed to have these accounts. I didn't even like think like, it's not that like I wanted to be a streamer. It was just like the to stream, you do this. Like you have these accounts. So I was like, okay. So I made all these new accounts because I didn't really like want it tied to any of my real life things. Like I didn't really care to showcase it to my friends from high school or anything like that. Like I wanted to keep it very separate. Like it was kind of like this part of my self that nobody really saw from my real life, I guess. I mean, quote unquote real life. I mean, like I would say I've always loved gaming, but I didn't really talk about it except to a few groups of people or gamed with a few couple of people. So some people knew, I'd say most people didn't that I loved games and have been gaming my whole life. But that being said, I start a whole new social media presence. I am now Quarter Jade. Quarter Jade on Instagram, Quarter Jade on Twitter. And you know what? This username had not ever been used. So thankfully I got them all and was able to secure them on Twitch, YouTube, everywhere, okay? And ever since it's truly been such a different experience than what social media used to be for me. Um, I'm gonna use this term because I don't know what else to use. <laughs> <laughs> but basically I was a normie okay and to me a normie is an individual who is not well versed in twitch culture now I'm sure there is a better word out there I don't have one yet and it is I I like we as a twitch community be just thrown around the word normie and I yeah, anyways. Okay, so before Twitch, I was a normie and my social media use was so different than what it is now. And I don't know if that is a unique experience to me or if like maybe if I never even streamed, would I still use social media in the same way? I don't know, especially, especially with the introduction of TikTok, which we will get to soon. So social media, my use of social media has become so much different. Now I'm not really just shit posting all of the time. I am thinking about the way in which I am being perceived, which has been being perceived is hard. Being perceived is so hard, but it's also it is amazing in its own right. Like don't get me wrong, I love this idea that the fashion that I wear, the hairstyle that I have, the music that I listen to, the books that I read can give you an indication of like, it's like a window into me. So being perceived is not bad. It's just hard because truly it's just a bunch of people judging, right? And people throw judging around and, and they think it's bad, but I don't think judging is can be a bad thing. Like it's like, to me, like judging is like a you're weighing someone, you're you're scaling them out, like you're you're like scoping it out, you you know, like you're, you're like oh you like this, I like this, oh I don't really like that, maybe we don't fight, but who knows, maybe we do. So I don't think that there's ever been a time in my life that being perceived wasn't particularly hard. Like I think back on my even my God, my middle school, not even go earlier. I really remember when I first started caring about my appearance back in like sixth grade or so. And I, it's because I started getting acne and girls were starting to become really cute around me and I was becoming really not cute. My mom would say differently, God bless her soul, but I did not feel cute. That was also the time when I started reading, <laughs> started reading manga, okay? And I... My first manga was Vampire Night. My mom bought it and let me read it. And I so badly wanted to be Yuki, okay? Um, 
because I, my first little anime crush or manga crush was Zero. And to this day, Zero has <laughs> forever altered my attraction to men. Okay, he is my type through and through. God, he's so hot. Anyways, so yeah, I wanted to be Yuki. I cut my long hair and bangs to look like her and no i did not look like her no i did not have to style my hair i'm like 12 and all i wore were zip up hollisters like hoodies <sighs> anyways i was not i was not well i mean okay i don't want to say i wasn't cute that's so mean to my younger self i was not looking like the popular girls and that is hard because popularity was so important it felt like back then and it's it's not okay like it's really not i think at the end of the day what does popularity mean like outside of high school i think like popularity just means like people like you and then in high school and school and such like school in general whether it be whatever grade you're in popularity is like not about people liking you, at least for me. I feel like popularity in high school was not about people liking you, but people thinking you were cooler than them. And like my high school, it felt like there was two popular groups. There was the popular because you were rich and hot. And then there was the popular because you're nice. <laughs> like you're the homecoming queen popular, you know? And if this is a Venn diagram, yeah, like let's say this was a Venn diagram. Popular because you're cool and hot and popular because you're nice. There are some overlapping individuals in there, but I would say for the most part, it was super separate. Um, I like to tell myself I was in the popular because I was nice, but I, yeah, who fucking knows, really? You know, I don't even. I, I don't know, man. Um, so <clears throat> I don't think I've ever not struggled with being perceived. Now, throw social media into that mix and good God, everything is on fire. Like we ha we are are being perceived by so many people that don't even, that aren't even in our lives, that don't even know us. Like back in the day when we used to live in little huts and villages, like we were being perceived by our relatives and, you know, Bob down the street. Not from, I don't know, Winnie from all the way over in Australia. Like, you know, Winnie, I'm sure you're probably really nice, but you know what I mean? Like, there's just so many opinions and it's truly grown. So, like, even even with my social media presence back when I was a quote unquote normie, I was only being perceived by really everyone in my school. Right. Like, I don't think my parents or my grandparents were on reading my Twitter. Actually, that's a lie. My mother was apps. My mother was reading my Twitter and she wouldn't let me swear. <laughs> she said, Jody, you have to be careful about your future on online and your future businesses or workplaces looking at them and not hiring you because you said, damn. And my mother was probably right. So thanks, mom. But um, yeah, I wasn't allowed to like anything that was weird. I Not even weird, but just like edgy. And I wasn't allowed to tweet swear words she was wiser than me okay I, I give her that um but anyways my grandparents are probably not reading my tweets but like everyone from school and maybe like other schools were reading my tweets but I didn't have to worry about being perceived by Winnie from Australia or Joshua from Japan as I don't even never mind it's funny to think about somebody named Joshua in Japan because anyways so now here we are current social media presence and I have thousands of followers. I have thousands of eyes on me perceiving me every day. And I would be lying if I said that weight did not affect me in some capacity. I think for the most part, I am, I do a good job at protecting my mental. Occasionally there are cracks and slips <laughs> And that's where friends come involved, where my support system comes involved and they help me. And I'm very grateful for them for like understanding what I go through because it wouldn't be possible without them. But it's hard. It is so hard. I don't even know how to word it. I think it's so interesting that 
a lot of people on the internet do not give you the benefit of the doubt. I think that's what I've I've found. But I also understand why you're not. Like you only see seven seconds of a clip of me and you're judging me based off of that seven seconds of the clip. I think what baffles me is when hate comments roll in. And now we've all heard the people who put hate comments just hate themselves, blah, blah. I get it. Believe me. Logically, I understand. Um, I understand that it's only because I'm actually empathetic of it. I remember a time in my life, I was probably in seventh grade when I, or not, maybe it was like seventh to ninth grade where I was just jealous. Like I was jealous and insecure and so unhappy with my appearance and just jealous. And I really had those hateful, spiteful thoughts, but I never left any comments. I kind of wanted to like if that was if there was a moment in time that I was going to do that, it was then I understand. Not where they're coming from, but how they feel like I understand looking at someone and seeing something that you want and don't have or whatever it may be and just feeling that hate and spite towards them. And I know that that's where hate comments come from. Like, because truly happy people or indifferent people are not taking the time to comment. Because I would say I'm a happy, indifferent individual. (laughs) So I'm scrolling. Let's say I'm scrolling on TikTok. I see something I don't like. I am not leaving a comment. I don't give a fuck. If anything, I'm pressing not interested or scrolling. Because that's just like, why? It doesn't, I'm not taking the time out of my day to tell them I don't like them or tell them I think that they, their shirt doesn't match their eyes or that whatever it may be. Like, I, I'm simply not bothered. I'm not bothering with that. So while logically, I understand that. I Like through and through, I get it. That doesn't mean that hate comments don't get to me because I'm being perceived by so many people. And I, like, it's so hard. Like, I don't even know. It's like I'm constantly bandaging myself in a survival game (laughs) like at other times i'm 100 hp and a hate comment goes and it ticks me one ticks me another and i have to heal myself and i don't think that that's bad i just think that's the way that it is i don't think that that's anything other than it's what like what it's supposed to be because I just think that's my reality of the job that I have, what streaming is, what being on social media is nowadays. And, and I can't even fucking imagine what it is like to be on social media and not even have it be your job now. Like, I think about even just how it was streaming five years ago versus now. Five years ago, five years ago, content I would create, I would push out. It's only going on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. TikTok wasn't around. YouTube Shorts were not around. So the algorithm was not what it was, right? Like it wasn't getting pushed to literally everybody. And I don't mean to like okay, so TikTok and Instagram, or sorry, TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts. It's why a lot of their, like why there are so many new creators being pushed into the scene, which is a good thing. Um, But it's because it's getting pushed to so many people. There is so much to discover. Like there's new viewers. The platform in general is growing because it's getting pushed to so many new people who have never even thought to seek it out. And that is what, TikTok is. It's like this never ending YouTube recommended page, except you're already clicking on the video. Like, I'm going to be honest, I do not watch YouTube because I just like, it doesn't get my attention, but I do scroll TikTok occasionally. So even like streaming back then was so different. It really felt like just a community, like a very, very niche community. And I am grateful for what the short formed content has done for my career because I would say that there are there is always a new individual in chat. But it is really hard because 
I used to be able to go on to, to Twitter and Instagram and like read my comments and be like, oh my God, it's my community. Like, I love these guys. Like, it's really just them and no one else. And I, and I, I like, I mean, there wasn't a lot of hate. It was just kind of friends shooting the shit. I was talking to a friend and about this exact thing. And he was telling me like five years ago, it was like you were on your own separate planet with your own separate party and you guys were all dancing it up and having a good time. And like, whoa, it's awesome here. Oh my God, whoa. And then some aliens invaded and they were like, fuck this place. We hate this party. We hate this song. That's exactly how I feel. Now there's TikTok. And of course, like I'm posting on TikTok as I should. Like it's a career move, right? And I go to my comments and can't wait to read them because I'm like, I know my community's following me, but it's not just my community. It's about 50% of my community and 50% of the random people who the algorithm is pushing my content to. And about 2% of those people are haters. And I would say that's a very small amount. Thank God. Who knows? I mean, I don't know if my percentages are accurate, but those 2% of a thousand feels like a lot at some, at some point in time, depending on where my mental is. And it, it sucks that that's inevitable right like that that is inevitable you will have to read the hate comments to also read the good comments but it's like i so badly want to read the good comments what is my job if not interacting with my community like what i would not do this if i was to just go on and talk to myself and game by myself it wouldn't be the same right that's what twitch is that's why Twitch is so amazing and unique in its own sense is that there is a chat, a live chat. And granted, TikTok is not a live chat. There's just comments, but like, I'm so bummed to know that it is inevitable and that people will always be unhappy and, and generally take it out on others rather than looking into themselves. But that doesn't mean that it makes it any less hard. <laughs> It's hard. There is no rhyme or reason to this podcast, I realize, as I am chatting it through. And I'm sorry if it is hard to follow. Maybe maybe there, will be, maybe someone in chat can let me know if <laughs> this is hard to follow. I hope it's not. And I, it's my first one, and we can always improve from here. <laughs> so now I want to talk about how I, I guess, cope with what I do, how I continue to kind of allow this to be a safe space for me when it feels like I'm kind of throwing myself to the wolves every time that I do go live or sh I guess post any sort of content. Um, because maybe, maybe, while what I do is unique, I feel like as people are just on social media now, we are kind of subjecting ourselves to hate. Because I feel like social media is so much more than what it used to be when I was a normie, when I was in high school, when I was using social media prior to being quarter jade and I was just Jody. Because I think about like, I can't even imagine having an Instagram account and being in high school right now and how it affects popularity, how it affects your, what's the word? How it affects your worth, your self-worth, your confidence, especially with how beauty standards have been just so pushed in Instagram. So I hate it, but I'm sure it's really hard. And I... I think of what Ask FM was back in the day for me is what Instagram is now for people like in high school right now. Like not in the sense that it's a mirror of each other, but the toxicity of it, I don't know, it scares me. So I'm going to talk about how I cope with it. First of all, how I cope, it's truly my support system. I would, guys, I would have like hit the hills running five years ago if it weren't for making friends in the scene. To be surrounded by individuals who understand me 
and empathize with me and sit down and listen to me is so, so important. And it can be anyone, right? It could have been my mom, could have been John, my friend Sydney, you know, like I have those people. And the minute that a hate comment gets to me, I just text someone. I could text Sydney. This person said this thing about me. It really hurt my feelings and it's really getting to me. And she'll reply and be like, fuck that. Okay, well, not really. (laughs) She usually responds and says, she just grounds me. A lot of the time, so she'll just be like, that person is hateful. They hate themselves and they write that because they hate you. It's ammo against you. Or she'll let me know. She'll validate me and be like, that is so not true about you. I know you. That's not you. You know, we be saying all the right things. So truly, it's like, I just have the people around me to reach out to who know me. Like see me in my day to day, know my character, know my intentions, love me, that matter. They're, They're my village, right? They're the only people who matter. And if they like me, that's all that really matters. So that, I would say, is like 80% of the pie. (laughs) Now, another way that I, I don't know, I don't want to say cope. Copium has such a bad rep to me now. That emote has ruined me. I would say another way that I help myself get through the tough times is really just like to set boundaries with myself and to stick through them, stick with them, stick to it. I don't know. <laughs> um, but like if I am not in the mental capacity to be reading the good, or that's not the word. If I know that I am not in the right mental space to be receiving hate, then I cannot read my comments, which sucks because I so badly want to read the good comments and chat and interact. But if I cannot read a hate comment and let it be like slide right off my back, then I just can't read anything at all. And yeah, believe me, that fucking sucks. Like I really hate those moments when I'm like, I want to interact with my community so badly, but I simply can't because there's one stupid little motherfucker who just won't leave me alone. Be truly getting one guide because my mental isn't good. That's a boundary set that I just have to, I like understand myself. It's an expectation I understand and put on myself. And it it comes in waves. Like I would say that for the most part, I'm pretty good because 80% of the pie, like I said, really be taking care of me. But also that pie is is based, it's really me and taking those breaks that I need. Another part of that pie is therapy. I could have a whole other podcast on therapy. I am a huge advocate for getting a therapist. If you have the means to, you know, I'm just going to really quickly talk about Rise Above the Disorder, which I talk about all of the time, but they, they're how I found my current therapist and the therapist before that. And they do all of the heavy lifting for, for you. So you, you'll reach out to Rad. They will help you find a therapist that's right for you. They will do all the heavy lifting, okay? And and they will even help you pay for it if you need. But anyways, um, therapy has helped me so much, even such a short span of time. I mean, it's been like two years since I've seen a therapist, but (laughs) every therapist session, like every, every therapy session feels like I'm on a Monopoly board and I've like rolled a six and I get a move six basis forward like it truly just feels like progress it feels like I understand myself more and I become stronger and I believe in myself more my overall opinion of myself is higher and I'm not saying you can't do that without therapy you absolutely can but for myself it was hard to get myself out of that kind of that feedback loop that really negative feedback loop that I had and have like that I recognize in myself and God knows where it comes from. I mean, that's another, that's another talk for another time. But yeah, therapy has helped me a lot with, like I said, like understanding myself and helping me get to a place where I have a higher opinion of myself, where I value my own thoughts and I find my self-worth to be very high, which in the past was not it. Like I, I really struggled 
And even recently, I really struggled. Um, There was a moment in time, we can talk about this in another podcast, but there was a moment in time when I was really struggling, maybe like two weeks ago, and my therapist really, really helped me make progress. And I came out feeling like a new woman. I came out feeling like I like restarted my brain. Like I got a new subscription and now I've been on that new subscription ever since. It was great. I'm a huge analogy person. (laughs) You will come to find out. (laughs) Another way that I am able to do what I do, even with the influx of hate, is I really prioritize my mental health. And I think my community sees that. And God, I cannot even begin to tell you how grateful I am that they allow me to do that. Like that they see the value in that and that they're willing to wait, like not wait around, but that they're patient with me. Like streaming content creation, it rewards degenerate like behavior. We, we know that it rewards devoting your life, selling your soul almost like to just the grind. The more hours I stream, the more content I'm able to make, the more content I'm able to push out to short content, which then rewards me with more viewers, which then rewards me, blah, 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 right? I, I can't, I cannot. I would be a husk of myself. I would, I would turn to dust. I would not survive. I would not survive it. I mean it. Like I wouldn't, I would not be in a good place if I were to do that. And I noticed that very early on in my streaming career, I was like, oh, at first I thought, oh, I'm not cut out for this. I'm simply, I'm not made for this career because I wasn't really following the expectations or the hours that everybody else was doing. But because of my community, because they're so understanding and empathetic and God, I love them. I have been able to create this unique space for myself that I am like, I can't even, I really cannot begin to tell you like the, how grateful I am. It feels like grateful is too small of a word. Like there's not enough oomph there, but it's like just, yeah. I have this space that they allow me to stream not 140 hours a month, but I am able to work at my own pace and put out content I'm really proud of and that I like, and I'm able to explore other things like this podcast that I have great feelings about because I put my mental health first. And I used to really get upset with myself. Like I wish I was that girl who loved the grind. I wish I was that girl who loved achievements and hitting things and hitting 140 hours and being on a billboard and doing other things because I, I see how it works for others. And I, I, I really was like, God damn it, Jody, you got to be like that. And now I'm really coming to the realization that it's okay. I'm, the thing is, is like, I'm happy. <laughs> I've worked with this with my therapist. She's like, well, would you want that? Like, okay, imagine that. Do you want it? Are you striving for that? Like, no, I don't want it. She's like, then why are you like aiming for it? Like, I don't know, but it feels like what I'm supposed to do. So I've come to the realization that what I want to do, what makes me happy is putting my mental health first. And I can say that I am in a very good space right now. Not the best. Can always be a little bit better. I'm always working towards it. But I put my mental health first. I create those boundaries, whether it be with people, social media, whatever, being perceived, right? And like, if I am not in the capacity that I need to be to be perceived, then I don't. I sit my ass on this couch and I read a book all day. And that's that's how I cope. But the thing is, it makes me happy. I love reading books. You know what I mean? So it's not bad that I don't want to be perceived. It's just, I understand that it's bad when I force myself to be perceived. There was a moment in time when streaming was really getting to me. And I think that this moment was really the catalyst to 
how I now operate, how I've changed, how I have changed my expectations and my workflow and whatnot. And some of you listeners might have been around for this like moment. Um, I want to say it was maybe three years ago. <laughs> Valorant came out. <laughs> and um, I've never really been someone who was good at video games. Like I grew up in, like my brother was the one that was good at video games. My brother was crazy at video games. He used to dominate in Halo, okay? I wasn't, I was, I just had fun. I was semi-good and I was all right, but I was never like crazy. And I hit Platinum Valorant. I was like, wow, this is surprising. Okay, I hit Diamond. And good God, did the floodgates open. I hit Diamond and everybody's in my chat. And they, I've never in my whole, in my years of streaming, have seen my chat so hateful. Except when I played Rust, but that's a, anyways. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I hit Diamond and I, it was just something I was so not used to. Like I said, I've been really lucky with my community and I have felt that way since the beginning of time. But that was a moment where I was like, this is not what I want. My stream is growing. I'm doing well in the game. Great, cool, whatever. My career is good. But this is not the community community that I want. I can't handle this. This is too much hate. Not like no amount of mods in the world can fix this because there was just such an influx. It was like now my main community is the minority and the majority were just spiteful people who were like, you're not diamond. This is diamond. Oh my God, you're bad. Me, me, me. Women, women suck at video games. Get back in the kitchen. Wah, wah, wah. And because I had never received that kind of influx of just spiteful, toxic comments, I was not prepared to handle it. And so I stepped away. I told my community, I'm out. I gotta go. I have to take a break this is affecting me and I don't, I'm not having fun with this. I'm not enjoying this. I'm dreading streaming now and I have to go. I'm going to take a break. And that was kind of unheard of. I ain't never heard of anybody taking a break indefinitely from streaming. And I knew that there was a chance that I would come back and no one would be around. And I actually was just like, I don't care. Like I can figure it out. No matter, I'm very confident in myself that, I will make whatever work. And I took that break knowing that I might never stream again, that, that, that my streaming opportunity might have like, that was it, might have passed. And it was slightly like hard at first, but it got to the, I got my, like to my breaking point. I was like, well, it's this or whatever. And I mean, I graduated college, so I had a backup plan. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, if this doesn't work, I'm going back to school and I'm, I will go to medical school and I'll be a doctor and fuck streaming. So I took a break. It was, quote unquote, an indefinite break. I literally told my community, bye bye. I have to go take an indefinite break. Thank you for everything. I got to go. And I did. And in that month, I really just relaxed. <laughs> I, I breathed. I tried to get help, I remember. I don't think I ended up doing it, but I do remember trying to. Um, I reevaluated my my mental, my space in the community, and I, I kind of set boundaries for myself. I journaled a lot um, and realized how negative my self-talk was because my community was so negative, and I was like, they should not be allowed to have this See, I don't want to claim them even as my community. It was more like their self, their talk to me was so negative that it started impacting my own self-talk to myself. So they're not my community. I don't claim them, but it was affecting me. So I was journaling a lot and I could tell that even my journaling was really negative. My self-talk was negative. And I didn't come back to streaming until I was confident that my headspace was ready to like ready to handle that ready to handle the the hate comments if they were to come it took me a solid month or so i would say so it was an indefinite break labeled as an indefinite break and it ended up being a month and i came back and oh god i am so grateful my community was around 
And not only that, but they were so hyped to see me. Like my my welcome back was from my memory, like it was good. Like people were excited that I was back. It was like people were, people weren't, I guess, I don't know. The, it's not that I was scared that people would forget about me. It was just like irrelevance is an interesting thing to talk about when it comes to streaming. And I would say that drives a lot of streamers or is a pressure that I constantly try not to, I just ignore it. I try to really, I'm like, ah, whatever. It is what it is. But yeah, I think I was like, there was a chance that I would become irrelevant, but instead I was truly welcomed with open arms. Like, man, I'm smiling. I'm getting emotional. I was met with open arms and understanding. And because, because of that, I am able to do what I do now. I am able to do what I do today. I was able to set boundaries for myself. I was able to understand myself more, the capacity that I, in which I could receive hate. <laughs> and it's such an interesting thing to say that because that's that's what social media is. That is what streaming is, is in what capacity can you receive hate and come out on the other side healthy and happy? <laughs> and I have finally found that. And that means not streaming 140 hours for me. And that means sometimes not reading comments. And it means sometimes taking a break. It means sometimes binge reading all day. Sometimes it means escaping in that, like in that book. But I found it. And I think that I've, um, once I, I think I'm still finding it, but I think I have found a sliver of it. And because I've done that, I'm able to do other things now, like explore podcasts or skincare content. And it's, it's like once I've really nailed that balance, because balance is everything, then, well, shit, I've made it. <laughs> then I can, then I think I'll live a very fulfilling life. Not that I don't do that now, but my most fulfilling life. So really, a lot of us have social media. I would say every single individual I know and have met have social media. Now they may might not use it every day, but they still they still have it. It's a presence. And to the people that do want to share content, like whether it be on TikTok or you want to make a YouTube video or maybe you want to stream, there will be some point that it's not just for the ha ha shits and giggles. There's going to be some point where that piece of content gets pushed to the masses and. It's okay if the capacity for you to intake hate comments is small. That's okay. But just be careful. Be mindful, right? I think I have talked really negatively on social media this whole time. So I just want to clarify. Like, I think social media has such great benefits. I, my grandparents are able to keep up with me all of the time. <laughs> and I feel like everyone's grandparents always want to be more involved in people's lives or in their grandkids' lives and they haven't, but now they just get to go on Instagram and see like what their kids are posting. I am able to also, like my mom reads my tweets. Um, I'm able to connect with my, someone who lives in Norway, my like some random relative who lives in Norway on Facebook. Like not only does it connect us, okay, but we're able to just like have ease of relationships with people who I've like, I'm no longer living around, which is, amazing i get to keep up with people from high school who i adore um were and not only that but you're able to find communities like you are truly able to find like such niche communities like okay you love i don't know maybe you like bird watching but specifically at night okay i don't know i can't think of an example but let's say it's super niche that there is a community out there. There's a community on whether it be Facebook, on Reddit, on Instagram, like it's out there. Discord. You want to find friends to game with? You join a Discord call. There's a channel out there where like there's people who are looking for games. You're no longer truly alone. There are ways to like seek out online relations. And I'm sure our parents from 15 years ago cringe at that and are scared for us. But hey, you know what? With some some mind, like, you know, if you're mindful about it, there's some good relationships to be made if you're safe. There's such benefits to social media. 
It's just that there's also the potential for a lot of negatives. And if you do not be mindful of the negatives and how they can affect you, then you're kind of running blind. And that's exactly what I did. And I struggled. Like I said, I took a whole month off because I was really just in the trenches and I had to figure it out. But now that I figured it out and I've created those boundaries for myself, I'm okay. But I just, there's such positive, but there is such negative. And I believe me, I understand being perceived as hard, but we don't always have to be perceived. I do. I just, I worry about how social media is probably just going to get quote unquote worse. Like the negatives are going to become quote unquote worse. Like there's just going to be more people on social media or more ways for people to really just spread hate. But I keep telling myself that I just look at my community and I'm like, against all odds, here we are. I'm gonna be honest, don't even really, really remember what I talked about, so I can't even really wrap this up. Like, there's no conclusion to be made. <laughs> and again, apologize for lack of run of show. I have just been rambling for hopefully an hour. Ah, 53 minutes. You know what? Thank you for listening to me. Little me. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me for 53 minutes. Talk about literally, I don't know what. Social media, perception, negatives, positives my experience in streaming i don't know i don't even know what to title this whatever thank you for listening and truly i hope that maybe there was some insight in here or maybe this made you laugh or brought you some sliver of positivity in your day that is all i can hope for all right well until next time bye bye <laughs>